Hey, I'm Dan Green from 4MS Company, and we're here with the Spherical Wavetable Navigator at Superboost 2019. Um, here it is. It is out. It's, we released it already. And um, let me go over some of its basic overview and some of the more uh, finer technical details and maybe get into some advanced features too. So here we go. This is a six channel synthesizer. There's six VCOs, six LFOs, six BCAs. Right now you're hearing one, uh, all channels are tuned to the same note and they're all uh, browsing through the same, the same spherical wavetable. You can uh, change the pitch by octaves and by, uh, by semitones. Um, also by scents, so one hundredth of a semitone, by holding the fine button down. You can hear that. Um, one really interesting use that if you have ever used multiple oscillators together is to detune them. Tune them to the same note and then detune them from each other. So we can do that easily by pushing and turning. So you hear the beat frequencies. You can detune, spread detuning we call it, by holding fine and turning the spread knob. So now we're actually getting into almost new semitones and bring it back. So it's pushing the tuning uh, the, of each channel fur further from the, all its neighboring channels. Um, you can also transpose each channel individually to make chords. So here I could go. Or I can also load some preset chords if you, uh, there's 25 preset chords pushing and turning the transpose knob. So here I have a chord and then when I'm turning the center knob, I'm changing the wavetable. And let me explain a little how that works on this, this, uh, this module. The each, we call it a sphere, it's a wavetable of, it's a table of wavetables, three by three by three. So there's 27 waveforms in a sphere. And when you browse in either dimension, you get to the end, it wraps it back to the beginning. So we call it a sphere because it wraps around uh, like, a, like a globe would, would wrap around if you tra traversed it. It also is three-dimensional, so we call it a sphere, even though uh, the geometry technically would be a three-torus if you're the mathematical, uh, uh, the truth of it. But um, we call it a sphere, and that's the, the 27 waveforms make that up. When I turn this browse knob, I'm traversing the sphere in a zigzag pattern. So every point on the sphere is a different waveform, and I'm moving around it in a way that traverses every single waveform and it morphs between adjacent ones. You can, uh, you can also just traverse the sphere, we call it navigating the sphere one dimension at a time with these three knobs. So here's like this way, or it could go this way, or it could go the fourth dimensional equivalent of the next dimension that would be, like there. So, um, up until now, we've had every waveform, every channel tuned, uh, uh, playing the same waveform, but you can also, of course, browse them individually. And this is a great way to make drone sounds. And again, there's a shortcut for this if you just want to tune them all separately. But we call it dispersion. So I'm going to turn the octave down. So it's easy to make rich, vibrant textures. And of course, if you're really working with drones, you want some kind of motion in this usually. So um, an easy way to do it is to use the LFO out. There's six LFOs built in. Of course, you could patch any external modulation. All the jacks, uh, the modulation jacks, they work on zero to five volts. Um, and here I'm going to 
pick one of these LFO outputs, I just turned it into a sine wave, and I'm going to patch it into the browse knob so I could speed it up or slow it down. And it's doing integer multiplications and divisions of the main clock, uh, which I'm using an internal clock, but I, can, I might show this later. I, I can patch an external clock in, too. So there I could increase the gain of the LFO by pushing and turning this knob. So now we have more modulations. So this is not, uh, nice. I, I like this sound actually right now. And I'm going to, to use another feature called the presets. By turning this knob in the corner here, you can save the state of the entire thing, minus the patch cables, of course, into a preset. You have 108 possible preset slots. So you just turn this knob and you pick a slot that's open, or, or you could overwrite an old one. Here, I'll pick this one. Um, there's six pages of 18. Save it there. OK, so now I can come back to this sound at, at any time. Um, and I'm actually going to unplug that and show you another feature. I'm turning the LFO shape knob now. Uh, well, here, let's just go to a blank slate. This might show it better. OK, so I just loaded a blank preset. I just cleared everything. I still have my old, uh, my old position. Um, so let's make a chord like I did before. I'm going to show you how to make a melody. I just selected a preset chord. I could dial in my own individually. Um, now, with one button, I can patch the LFOs to the internal VCAs. And here we have a melody. So this is sort of like a sequencer. It's not an actual sequence because um, it's not on a grid or anything. It's actually six independent LFOs that are all, they happen to be tuned to the same frequency, the same period, and they're 60 degrees out of phase. So they fire one after another in a nice little sequence like this. Just to show you, I could have them, um, if you push these buttons, it resets the phase. Now they're all firing together. So now I could have this one go double time, and this one go triple time, and this one go double time. And uh, let's mute that triple time. And let me show you another thing. You can also adjust the phase. So here I have these two LFOs, and they're going out of phase. I could turn it so they're going in phase. All right, so here I can, without adjusting their speed, I can adjust where they land in the measure. So and again, you can adjust the waveform of any, any of the channels at any time. So uh, yeah, that's the LFOs. Um, or that's the LFOs being patched to the VCAs internally, which is a super useful feature. You also, of course, as I showed earlier, you have these outputs which you could patch into anything uh, just to give some extra modulation. For instance, waveform, or I could change the node of another channel when it fires. Sorry. Right, something like this. So, OK. Now let's go back to that, that, that drone I had earlier. Right there, I just loaded a preset. Um, now, let's say I said, oh, oops, I didn't mean to load that. I actually wanted to save the thing I had earlier. I can undo, sorry. I can undo my, my preset load, and I said, oh, okay, now I'll save this one. And now I want to go back to where my drone before. So now I can go back to my melody and back to my drone. So the presets is a really useful way that you could have a performance. You could stage um, uh, your different points in the performance along, as save them as presets, and then jump between them, jump to one, riff on it, play with it. You can also use it in a kind of a, like in a workshop uh, in your studio, for instance, if you want to have a uh, way of explaining with an idea. And then you can save the state you're at and then say, now, maybe I want to change this a little. 
maybe a little higher, some different sounds, and then you're like, no, no, I think I, I think I want to go back to where it was. So you can create these branching paths of where you work out your ideas. Um, and since there's six pages of 18 presets, you you have a lot of room to just save some random thoughts you might have and then come back to it later. So it's a very powerful feature. Uh, let's see. Um, so I'm just showing some of the sounds. Let me just explain some of the technical details. We have uh, the waveforms, as I said, there's 27 waveforms. Each one's 512 samples, uh, so 512 points. And the, it runs at 44 kilohertz. Um, there's 16-bit wavetables, though the processing is 32-bit internally. Uh, it's stereo out, and the even channels go to the right out, and the odd channels go to the left out. So, uh, and if you just want to play it mono, you just patch it in the right jack, and you get all six channels. Uh, again, I, I you said these buttons work as mutes. They also is another mode where you can use these buttons to manually play. So pressing the button triggers, turns the LFO into an envelope, and pressing the button then triggers the envelope to play the note. So it's six voices here on a keyboard. You don't have to play it like a keyboard. You can also play it with a special feature that detects anytime the voltage changes on any of these uh, pitch altering jacks, transposition or the individual volt per octave jacks. So let me just show you what I mean. I'm just going to plug a, a slow LFO from a peg. It's just a uh, triangle LFO. So instantly we have a melody. So how, did the, how does this work is that I have a uh, about zero to two volt LFO going into the spread CV jack, which is picking a different chord every time it gets a different uh, voltage level. Every time a different chord is picked, every time the note changes on an individual channel, it fires the envelope. So that's a special feature of note mode. So if I change the shape of the, of the envelope, I change the melody. You can also use this for some interesting self-patching techniques, which is, is rather experimental and unpredictable, but, but fun, often. Uh, I'm patching the internal LFO out into one of the pitch altering jacks, the spread. And maybe if I turn that one down a little in speed. So it's triggering itself to play different notes. You never know what kind of what result you're going to get, but it's a fun way to come up with melodic content without there. It's just going on its own now. So um, you've been hearing things in uh, semitone scales. You can also turn them, turn the quantization off. Uh, there's major, minor, and then all semitones. Um, and okay, those are the main features. But there's one other advanced feature in this module I'd like to show you. And that's wavetable recording. So I alluded to this earlier, but um, when you get the module, there's 12 spheres, so 12 spherical wavetables of 27 waveforms each, and you can record your own up to 108 additional ones of your own. It's pretty easy to do. I just sorry, I didn't tell you what I was doing. You go into wavetable record mode by pushing the three lit buttons at the same time. So now some of the features have changed on this. We have a quick start guide which uh, shows which what's different now. But you'll see right away you have these. Uh, these knob, uh, these buttons are blinking red and green. So I'm uh, just going to plug in a sample that I have pre-recorded here. Uh, you could use a mic or voice. You could use a patch that you made. Anything. Um, I'm going to monitor it so you can hear the sample. Do not stay away from me. All my bones can be seen. Okay, so there's a vocal sample, um, and if I push record, it's going to wait until it gets a signal. Do not stay away from me. I play it. All so now I have, this is the first, we're hearing the first waveform of the, the sample buffer that I just recorded. Two and a half seconds I recorded, and it's chopped it up into 27 little pieces. You can almost hear it talking. So it, it's, each, each waveform is only 512 samples, but since we picked it throughout a two and a half second period, 
you can almost hear that you can hear definitely a lot of format sounds sounds vocally so um, now that I have this I can change a lot of the different uh, characteristics of it I can change effects so I can add wavefolding and I can do this individually or globally to all the waveforms I could add metalizing I'm sorry that was a bit reduction metalizing and a low pass filter so we found maybe you want to make one of them uh, quieter like roll it off a little low pass filtering uh, you can change the normalization settings and the seam smoothness so uh, uh, you can also change where the 27 waveforms are taken out um, of the what you recorded so take different positions and you can uh, scale them up by octaves which grabs more samples and then resamples it down to 512 so when you're done you can save it uh, so I'm saving a custom sphere and it, it gets a color I don't know if you can see that but I just colored it uh, I picked a green one so now when I am browsing through my different spheres I have the 12 factory ones and then I have this one that I just added So and I can transpose. I can add detuning. Right. I could make each channel go to a different point. Right, just like any of the other wavetables. I could have some of the channels on this wavetable and some of the channels on uh, the other wavetables. So uh, Again, there's 108 custom user spheres you can add. So, and they, uh, uh, when you're browsing, it skips empty ones. It's so uh, I think I have probably a few custom ones here, but you don't have to worry about filling all of them. Uh, just so you can browse around between them. They stay in the order that you put them in. I guess is what I'm saying. So yeah, those are the main features. Um, there's of course a CV jacks for almost all the knobs and. There's uh, one volt per octave inputs for each of the six channels, and those are zero to 10 volts, so 10 octave range. In addition, there's a global one volt per octave transposition jack. Um, there's the spread CV jack, which I was using earlier to select different chords. Um, and then a clock in feature, which allows you to uh, sync all the LFOs up to a clock. Uh, so it accepts yeah, DAW uh, signals, or if you had a master clock in your patch or something like that. Um, you can do that, and of course you can use the LFOs themselves as uh, clock outs because you can pick uh, trigger wave shapes for them too. So you can, these are different ways you can sync the Swan with your other gear. Uh, besides, it also makes a really great standalone piece of equipment too. So yeah, that's the Spherical Wavetable Navigator. Um, it's out right now, it's uh, in dealers on the shelves, and we are pretty proud of it. We've been working on it for three years. So if you've come to previous Super Boost, you've seen earlier iterations of it, but it's finally done and we're, we're pretty happy. So yeah, thanks a lot.